Hey, I'm Amy. Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I've decided to talk about the books I'm really excited about that are coming out between now and about September. A slight caveat is that I will probably forget some books I'm super excited about, so apologies if that is your book um, or if it's a book that you're really excited about that you think I would like. I've probably just forgotten it. Um, I also know about a couple of books that are coming out that haven't been announced yet, um, so I think the best way to get around this is to do a video later in the year and I'll talk about the books I haven't mentioned this one um, and the ones coming out right up until December that I'm looking forward to. So I think the best way to do this is to go through from books coming out fairly soon to books coming out um, in September. I've tried to do them in order. I'll be reading from my crib sheet because um, I don't think I'll be able to remember all of them. So I think we'll start with a book that comes out towards the end of April and that is This Delicious Death. I'm just going to show you the cover because I absolutely love it and it says at the top it's a girly girl world. This one just ticks all my boxes. It is about a pathogen that's been released into the environment and makes some humans um, hunger for flesh and um, the government or whoever have, just, have um, created um, a synthetic flesh that people can eat so that they don't have to feast on their friends and neighbours. Um, a group of girls who have this condition go to a music festival and all hell starts breaking loose. Um, one of them goes feral and it turns out and eats a boy, as you do. Um, and other festival guests start disappearing and soon the girls realise that someone is drugging the ghouls and making them feral. And if they can't figure out how to stop it and soon no one at the festival is safe. I think that sounds so good, so original. I'm really excited to read it. Next up, we have The Witch and the Vampire, which comes out on the 2nd of May. Um, I'd heard the title and knew that I needed to read this one. That was about all I needed. Um, but I'll just tell you a little bit about it. It says that it is um, a queer Rapunzel retelling where a witch and a vampire who trust no one but themselves must journey together through a cursed forest with danger at every turn. That sounds amazing. I have got a little bit more into fantasy lately, so I'm trying to push myself to read a bit more because um, I have really been enjoying them. Next up, we have another title addition to the list, Stranger Danger. I just love that. I love the, I love a rhyming title. Um, this one says, from horror powerhouse author Marin Stoffels comes the next pulse quickening read. There's nowhere to hide when three teens find themselves in the middle of nowhere with no internet and a killer hunting them down. No phones, no internet, no social media at all. That's what it's going to take to finally get serious about school and focus on exams. Nova, Vin and Lotus even rented a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere so they won't get distracted. After that, everything can go back to normal, but they aren't alone. Someone is watching them from the forest, someone who knows their secrets, someone who wants revenge, and things will never be the same again. Um, I love our YA thriller. This has got lots of elements that I'm really intrigued by, like a remote setting, small group of people, external force looking in, all of that. Um, sounds really interesting to me. Uh, that one comes out on the 2nd of May. Next up, we have Lying in the Deep, and I'm very lucky I do have an early copy. Also comes out on the 2nd of May. Um, this one is one that I requested and the publisher kindly sent it to me. It's published by Razorbill. Um, I love the premise of this one and the setting it sounds really cool too. So it says, um, a juicy mystery of jealousy, love and betrayal set on a semester at sea inspired cruise ship with a diverse cast of deliciously suspicious characters will leave you guessing with every jaw dropping twist. After being jilted by her ex-boyfriend and best friend, Jade couldn't be more ready to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. 11 countries in four months all from the luxurious campus on board ship and to wedge an entire globe between her and the people who broke her heart. When Jay discovers the backstabbing couple are also setting sail, her obsession with them grows and festers leading to a shocking murder. And as their friends begin to drop like flies, Jade and her new crush must race to clear her name and find the killer they're trapped at sea with before anyone else winds up in body bags. I think that sounds brilliant. Um, Diana Evan has been on my radar for a while. I haven't read any of her books, so I'm really, really intrigued by this one. Next up, we have anne -Lise Avery's YA debut, The Immortal Games, um, which is very, um, likened to Law and the Hunger Games. I know anne -Lise Avery wrote some very good, very popular middle grade books um, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, so please check those out if you are interested. Um, I'll just flip the blurb. So it says, every lunar eclipse signifies the beginning of the Immortal Games, an epic set of games played by the gods of Olympus with randomly selected humans as their tokens. The stakes are high, the gods covet entertainment and glory above all else, for the tokens is about survival. I love it, anything that sounds a bit like the Hunger Games, and if it's a fresh slant on it, then I'm in. Uh, that one comes out on the 11th of May. Also out on the 11th of May is Every Word a Lie by Sue Warman. Anybody who's watched my channel before will know that I will read anything Sue Orman writes. She is one of my favourite YA thriller authors. Every time she just reinvents the genre, does something really interesting. 
Um, so her newest one um, is about a catfishing prank that gets out of control and gets deadly. Um, two friends, Amy and Stan, plan revenge on their prankster friend by catfishing her as her crush. They only meant to do it for a day or two, but then she ends up dead. As the catfish continues to strike others, Amy needs to find out who is really in control of the catfish. Can she trust anyone? And is she the killer's next target? I love that. I love how Sue takes sort of modern ideas um, and pulls them into why thrillers. It sounds amazing. Next up we have Bite Risk. This is one that I've been lucky enough to read an early copy of. It comes out on the 8th of June and it is a teen werewolf book, um, not to be confused with Teen Wolf. Um, but if you're a fan of that sort of thing, I would definitely recommend giving this one a go. It's about um, teenagers um, the world over are having to look after their parents on the nights of the month that there is a full moon because they turn into werewolves. So they have to lock them up um, and the teenagers can kind of roam freely. But what I really liked about this one is if that isn't cool enough, it turns into a really compelling thriller. It's got amazing characters. The writing is brilliant. Um, Sophie wrote some really popular middle grade books. Um, I think it's um, The Orphans of St Halibut's is the first one. Um, which I haven't actually read yet but I'm planning to but this one is just absolutely everything I could look for and it's good enough that it made werewolves um, just as cool as vampires to me so definitely add that one to your list I think I said eight, it comes on the 8th of June but just in case I didn't I'll say it again um, next we have um, Callum Bayron's next book You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight comes out on the 20th of June I don't know how well you can see the cover I'm sure my husband led it onto the screen for me um I just love that cover as soon as I saw it I thought yes this looks like the kind of thriller I'm always seeking um it says Charity Curtis has the summer job of her dreams playing the final girl at Camp Mirror Lake guests pay to be scared in this full contact terror game as Charity and her summer crew recreate scenes from a classic slasher film Curse of Camp Mirror Lake the more realistic the fear the better for business when the last weekend of the season Charity's co-workers begin disappearing when one ends up dead, Charity's role as the final girl suddenly becomes all too real. If Charity and her girlfriend Bessie hope to survive the night, they'll need to figure out what this kill is after. Is there more to the story of Mirror Lake and its dangerous past than Charity ever suspected? I love things where reality and um, fiction kind of blend together. The idea of kids acting out a horror film just sounds really fun to me. Um, so I'm excited about that one. Again, if I've forgotten to say it, 20th June is when that comes out. Next, another one that I've been lucky enough to read, um, The House Trap, is a middle grade book. Um, it comes out on the 6th of Ju um, July. I'm saying middle grade, but it, to me it has that sort of crossover into teen feel as well. Um, it's a book um, based on the escape room idea. A group of teens go um, searching for a little sister who's kind of wandered off in the woods. They end up in this creepy house, get shut in and have to solve a series of puzzles to get out of it. But there's a lot more to it than that. It's got links to the past, links to this creepy, um, eccentric millionaire slash billionaire, I'm not sure which, um, who built this house and set up the puzzles. Um, it's really good, very well done, excellent mystery, brilliant characterisation. So I'd recommend it, even if you're not normally a middle grade teen book fan, give this one a go, it's awesome. And that one, um, I think I said 6th of July, but just as a reminder, that's when that one comes out. Uh, next up, we have um, coming out on the 6th of July, um, Murder on a School Night um, by Kate Weston. On the front, the tagline is murder can really cramp your style. Um, obviously, I've been sent a proof of this, which I feel really lucky about. Um, I've heard brilliant things about Kate's books, haven't had a chance to read them yet. But um, this is her first foray into murder mysteries. And I think the idea of having Kate's brand of feminism and humour brought to a murder mystery it sounds like a really good idea to me. Um, I'm just going to read the blurb. I, I haven't printed this one out so I'm just going to grab the iPad. Um, so it says sex education meets a good girl's guide to murder in this darkly hilarious way a murder mystery by comedy women in print prize and Carnegie medal nominated author Kate Weston. There's never a good time to find a dead body but finding a dead body while you're trying to kiss your crush dead awkward. All Carrie wants to do is stay at home with her rom-coms and strict retainer schedule. Instead, her BFF Annie has roped her into going into their first six one party to investigate who's cyberbullying Heather, the most popular girl in school. On the cusp of kissing her dreamy crush Scott, Kerry discovers the body of Heather's second in command suffocated with a menstrual cup. Within days, another student turns up dead, this time with a sanitary pad across the eyes. Now Annie and Kerry are officially on the case to stop the menstrual murderer, period. I think that sounds really interesting and really fun and like I said it brings together the things that Kate is known for but goes in a fun new direction. Next up we have Catherine Foxfield's latest and a little insta -bite author for me. Um, Getting Away With Murder is the title, it comes out on the 6th of July. If you haven't read Catherine's other books, as with Sue Warman, 
I love them all. Um, they're brilliant YA thrillers. Um, Catherine's have sort of a horror feel. Um, and I'll just share the plot of this one with you. So it says, Walking Sister Saffron and her perfectionist twin sister Georgia have only one thing in common. They're both obsessed with Battle Royale video game Soul Survivor. While working at a brand new high-tech escape room complex, Saffron posed a question to the resident AI. Which high school stereotype would survive the longest in a real-life version of Soul Survivor? She's convinced a rebel like her would be a know-it-all like Georgia. Unbeknown to her, the AI decides to determine the answer to her question by testing it out for real. It invites Saffron and Georgia's gamer friends to a preview of the escape room, but then it locks the doors and turns the rooms into a life-or-death battle to the big last player standing. The rebel, the know-it-all, the princess, the jock, the geek, the weirdo, the star, the artist and the criminal. Just like in Soul Survivor, only one can survive the night. How good does that sound? Um, I'd read anything that Catherine Foxfield wrote, but that one in particular sounds really, really fun. Next up we have Black Heat by Bex Hogan, who's the author of um, the really popular Isle of Storm and Sorrow um, Pirate Way series. Um, this one is um, the first, I don't know whether, um, oh it says a new way fantasy, I'm not sure if it's going to be a series, possibly will be. Um, comes out on the 6th of July, it says exile rebel healer, three underestimated women destined to be brought together by revenge in this dark and thrilling new way fantasy. Marzal, an exiled daughter with a plan for her return. Rain, a rebel blacksmith with a blade of blood. Elena, a gentle midwife with a fiercely protected secret. Each woman wants peace for her country, but in times of war, not everyone fights by the same rules. As their countries burn around them and the stakes of victory rise, each one will have to decide how far she is willing to go for peace. But the desire for revenge also burns deep. It's going to show you the cover. Um, I was lucky enough to get sent a proof of this one. It comes out on 6th of July. Um, I'll just show you this. I think this is possibly going to be the finished cover, but I really like the fact that I did a character quiz and the publisher sent me um, a cover personalised to the character that I'm the most like, which is a really nice touch. Next we have The Brothers Hawthorne. Um, I've only read the first two Inheritance Games books. Um, this one I think is linked to those, but is, is kind of um, a spin-off. Um, it says four brothers, two missions, one explosive read. So I'm hoping that in this one we'll get to know the Hawthorne brothers a lot better because I really liked them as characters. That one comes out on the 31st of August. Next up we have Cynthia Murphy's latest. Um, this one is a little bit different. It's from Barrington Stoke, which is the dyslexia friendly publisher. Um, Cynthia has been published by Scholastic previously. Um, this one's called Welcome to Camp Killer um, and it sounds really fun as all of Cynthia's books are. When an American style residential camp is set up in the grounds of an English stately home, the teenage camp counsellors are looking forward to a fun summer of activities. But right from the outset, things don't feel quite right at Camp Miller. Rumours circulate of a tragedy that took place in the grounds and there are unexplained sightings of a ghostly presence. Then the incidents begin. A near drowning out on the lake, a fatal fall from a cliff face. Are these tragic accidents or is there something more sinister going on at Camp Killer? I love a camp book. Um, I love... Murder Mystery, this one sounds great and it is out on the 7th of September. Next up we have Gabriel Dillon's latest book. Gabriel Dillon wrote White Out, which is one of my favourite YA vampire books. This I think is his middle grade debut. Um, it sounds very much um, like a Goosebumps. Um, it's called Shiver Point, it came from the woods, out on the 14th of September. And it says, welcome to Shiver Point, home of spooks, screams and small town horror. Enter if you dare. Shiver Point is boring, nothing interesting ever happens there and there's never anything fun to do. At least that's what Alex has always thought. Until one night in the dead dark he spots what looks like a meteorite plummeting into Howlmore Forest. Intrigued, Alex goes to investigate. But little does he know, four other kids have also spotted the same streak in the sky. Troublemaker Ollie, studious Sophia, curious Mo, and budding engineer Riley. What they discover is far beyond their wildest dreams, in fact it belongs in their nightmares. Can the gang work together to save the town from the bloodthirsty body snatcher that's arrived with a meteorite before it's too late? One thing's for sure, Shiver Point will never be the same again. It says it's a hair-raising new horror series for readers aged 9 to 12, perfect fans of Goosebumps and Dreadwood. It sounds awesome, I still need to read Dreadwood actually, but I'm really hyped for this. I love Gabriel's writing and I think that this sounds like a really great direction. Next up, a little plug for the next book that I'm involved with. Um, a Taste of Darkness is um, a YA horror anthology that I've curated with my friend Mia Kushnia. And we've got together a list of absolutely amazing UK YA horror authors and some authors who are dipping their toes into YA for the first time, which is exciting. So I'll read you the list of authors and tell you a little bit about it. 
So we've got um, Mia and I have written stories. We've also got Kat Dunn, Kat Ellis, Rachel Facciarotti, Catherine Foxfield, Dawn Kurtigich, Amy McCulloch, Cynthia Murphy, Lynn Salisbury, Louis Stowell, Rosie Talbot and Mary Watson. And I can tell you the stories are absolutely amazing. Um, we cover lots of um, different kind of subgenres of horror, dip into some. Um, some of the stories have common themes. Some of them are just completely um, their own beast. Um, and I'm just really, really excited about it. Scholastic have described it as a chilling, thrilling collection of 13 haunting tales, perfect for every wire reader. Um, it comes out on the 14th of September, um, so I hope you might be interested in checking that one out. Next up, we have a new Goosebumps series, Goosebumps House of Shivers, um, scariest book ever. There isn't much information about it, there's no cover as far as I can tell. It comes out on the same day as my book um, and Mia's 14th of September, and it says it's a brand new Goosebumps series. Um, Prepare to be scared like never before. From the delightfully twisted mind of R.L. Stein comes a fresh new vision for the fan favourite brand. This new series will feature an all new lineup of villains with iconic monsters as you've never seen them before, whose antics are just destined to make them every bit as beloved as Slappy. I'm excited about that. I really enjoyed um, R.L. Stein's anthology of short stories for middle grade readers um, that came out recently, so I think this one is going to be good fun. So that is it. They're the books I am excited about and um, that are coming out later on in the year. Um, obviously I'm sure I will have missed some um, so please let me know in the comments if you're excited about the books I've mentioned, if you think there's any others that I would enjoy um, and hopefully I'll be able to review those for you um, in future videos so you can see what I think of them. Uh, thank you so much for watching as ever likes and subscribes are really appreciated and I will hopefully see you in the next video.